Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. Now today we are talking about the finale of Dragon Ball Super. Yes, the final episode of Dragon Ball Super is upon us, and joining me today is MJTV, formerly known as Geekless TV. Please say hello. I think you got me confused with that guy, bro, but uh, thank you for having me back on the channel. Always a pleasure. Oh yeah, they're, they're completely different people, MJTV and Geekless TV, they're just completely separate. And we are talking about today the wish that, spoilers, if you don't want to get spoiled about the finale, the final episode of Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Super episode 131, please click off this video, but, you know, without further ado, Seventeen got the wish, um, you know, the Super Dragon Ball wish, you know, since... Uh, the winner of the Tournament of Power, Grant, gets to, um, you know, ask for one wish by the Super Dragon Balls, sh uh, Super Shenlong, and he wished for all of the Erased Universes to be brought back to life. Um, so I'm going to spin it over to MJ. What did you sort of think about that wish in general? Did you think it was kind of convenient, or do you think it was rather well handled? Man, if I had that wish, I would have wished for all the women in the world to be with me. But no, uh, it was okay. I was thinking it was going to be a lot worse. Now, if they had had Vegeta or Goku or Jiren perform the wish, uh, I probably would have been a bit more upset. With 17, I understand it, especially within this new character they've been trying to paint for 17. That's actually a, a funny point because in GT and in Z and even in the future timeline, those... I guess variations of 17 are very different to the 17 that we know now. Like, whatever he's been through, whether, you know, getting the family, uh, finally getting that job as a wildlife protector, all these years, it's really changed him, you know what I mean? He's a really different person. So it makes sense for him to be the one to do this wish, and I'm kind of happy they did that. You know what I mean? Because like I said, if it was Goku or Vegeta, I think it would have been a bit out of character for Vegeta or Goku to wish him back. Like, Vegeta, I could buy him wishing back Universe 6, but not all the universes. You know what I mean? So, with 17, I think it makes sense. Eh, they could have went a different route. Probably would have preferred it if they had went a bit more ballsy. But I think for 17's character, it makes sense. Yeah, and sort of the development of Seventeen's character over the years of, you know, existing in the Dragon Ball world, I definitely agree that it was sort of in tune to his character and sort of completed that sort of arc that Seventeen was going through throughout the Tournament of Power. And while um, Goku, I think it would have been in character for Goku to wish back all the universes because he just wants to fight strong guys, and Jiren is the strongest, you know, guy in Universe 11, you know, um, the strongest member of the Pride Troopers, you know, it would make sense for Goku to want to uh, fight him again and wish back all of the universes. But what I think is really cool about the wish itself is that Zeno would erase every universe if um, this wish wasn't made. You know, the reason why sort of he had the Tournament of Power is to test the mortal levels of each of the uh, universes, you know, the eight universes that are competing. And he basically, 17 basically proved to Zeno that mortals can improve and mortals are good people, you know, and universe 7 is good. Um, so then, you know, 17 wishes back all, all of the universes. And I think, um, you know, the, the wish of bringing all the universes back to life being a part of Zeno's plan is really clever from a narrative perspective. It sort of gives more purpose of the t for the Tournament of Power, and it just ties the narrative and the arc together really nicely. I really like that small bit of dialogue with Zeno saying, like, oh, if you didn't wish back all of the universes, that would prove to me that this universe really does suck and there's no improvement of the mortals and I would just destroy every one of the universes and I just really liked that little piece of dialogue and it really um going in we I think we all knew that all of the universes were going to be revived or at least universe 11 or universe 6 but we all knew that you know some universes were going to get revived and the way that they handled that I believe is you know better than expected See, what's funny about this, because some people actually have issues with it, but I actually want to go all the way back to Z. 
even though his character was a lot more kind of like off the gun, you know, back in Z, and he was really crazy <laughs> in the future timeline, uh, you gotta remember, he still was kind of in tune with the human part of him, him being, you know, a Ningen, you know, if you will, because if you go back to the original manga, I'm pretty sure this is also in the anime as well, there's a scene where when they want to go to Goku, you know, to kill Goku, he wants to take a car and take a cruise, you know, and chillax and go down that way instead of just flying and getting there quickly. And 18 makes a remark, you know, that's very human of you to do that. You know what I mean? Why, why, why can you do that? We can fly fast. <laughs> just go over there. And I think that speaks volumes because, like I said, he was already in tuned with his human side. But now his arc, if... You know, his whole character arc is finally done because he did not make a selfish wish. And that's one thing that I do like that they brought up because it does kind of help back up this whole bringing back the universes. Because a lot of people didn't want that, bro. A lot of people didn't want that because they felt it would make the tournament useless or it would make the whole entire arc a waste of time. I don't think so. As far as character growth for different characters we've seen throughout this tournament, I don't think it was a waste. And Seventeen's definitely one of them. Bro, if you had told me last year that 17 would win the tournament of power and that he would wish back all the universes i would have went <laughs> you're crazy you know what i mean i would have laughed at you the fact that he did that i mean that's beautiful dog uh, i mean sheesh <laughs> Um, no, I, I really think that um a lot of people were going into this finale expecting um a predictable narrative and I can see where they cut like they where like people are coming from um where they say that it kind of was predictable and you know reviving all of the universes it's been talked about to death but the way they executed it was really well done and that actually benefited the story as opposed to oh let's just revive all the universes just to um ensure that dragon ball can continue and thrive and create more stories you know reviving all the universes actually had a purpose in universe as opposed to just, oh, we can just milk these, uh, you know, this property if we have all the universes back, you know, since we can make spin-offs and all of that. They actually had a real purpose in uh, developing characters such as Seventeen and, you know, it, it, basically every one of the Universe Seven members because, like, this is a survival tournament. This is the universal survival arc where people are essentially erasing each other and wanting to survive. This is basically like a lot of savage acts. They are fighting for survival. So the fact that Seventeen, one of the most like, um, he, he's very like sociopathic. He doesn't really have any emotions. The fact that Seventeen of all people, like you were saying, man, made that wish um, to bring everybody back proves that there is good in the, um, in the multiverse and you know under you know extreme circumstances people can change you know Frieza changed uh, not to be a good guy but to help out Universe 7 for the good of mankind and for basically his survival I'm not saying that Frieza done it for the good of the multiverse and the good like the good of Universe 7 he done it for his selfish reasons you know he wants to stay alive but I'm just saying like that under extreme circumstances, it can really bring out the best in people, and I think that's where the Tournament of Power really thrives and really succeeds, is in that message of, under extreme circumstances, everybody can change and everyone beca can become a better person, and that's what we saw with Seventeen's Wish, and I thought it was extremely well done, and also Zeno. It added more character to him, you know, because for this longest time we thought you know he was just the audience you know the omni keys well they still kind of are but they actually added some more depth to him now they're actually kind of smart because that's kind of brilliant if you think about it you know what i mean because not only did they test these people by putting them in the tournament they were testing them right down to the end to when they made that wish you know what i mean they were testing to see if they would make a selfish wish or not and 17 obviously didn't so him making that wish and then us finding out about it them explaining that that actually, again, that's why I say I can't really say, yeah, it's predictable, but the execution was awesome, you know what I mean? And think about it like this, like you were just saying with all the other universes, they're all probably going to better themselves. This was an experience for these universes to get better. Like, you go look at Universe 9, the way Ro looks, you know, the Universe 9 Kaioshin, and the way the brothers are kind of, like, helping each other out, the trio of the dangers, like, I feel like... That's kind of like a message that these universes are going to better themselves, you know? They are going to, like, help 
you know, try and get their universe on track and raise their mortal level. And again, like you said, it just proves that mortals can change. And that's kind of funny because if you remember, what was the theme of the arc prior? That the fact that mortals don't change. Remember that with with, the, uh, with features in Masu. So I think that's kind of interesting that they went with that dynamic. And when you look at it like that, and when you start peeling back the layers, even though this may not have had a strong narrative, there is a nice little message there. We can all better ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, I th- I think the narrative like episode to episode wasn't that great, but the overall yeah, like as you said, the overall message and the and um certainly the character arcs. I think one of the highlights of this tournament, you know, plus with the uh, insane action and, you know, Takahashi, Shida, all of those key animators working on this arc, you know, there was also a message and a clear... Yeah, you, you, this arc had purpose, you know, for the longest time uh, people were saying, oh, this arc is useless if they wish back all the universes. No, I think... I, I, I argue the contrary. I think that because, um, you know that Seventeen wish back all the universes, that this arc had purpose, and it was just really well done. Um, but yeah, do you have any, do you have any final thoughts regarding this finale? Like, in general, like, I'm just, you know, spitballing here, not just about the wish, but just this finale in general, sort of, what did you think before we uh, wrap things up? There's a lot of people comparing it to GTZ and stuff like that, and there's people comparing it to you know, you know, saying it's the best episode of Super and all that stuff. I'll say this. For what they had, for the schedule they had, and what they're working with, they delivered a satisfying ending. It had issues, but I think it wrapped up things nicely. It was a bit rushed, but like I said, it was a satisfying ending, and I was happy with it. Yeah, and it left me wanting more. Um, there was a freezer at Capsule Corp in the last couple of shots, and I was like, what is he doing? What's going on here? And we'll obviously probably see that in the movie, and I'm very excited for it. Unlike uh, Z, where I didn't really want to see Oob, and I really didn't care, I think that this super ending left me wanting more. But what did you guys think in the comment section down below about this finale? Did you like Seventeen's Wish? Do you think it was a bit predictable? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, please subscribe to MJ if you haven't already. He's a fantastic power scaler and Dragon Ball content creator, and he's also branching out into other anime such as Hunter x Hunter, My Hero, so go check him out for quality anime content. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.